So today we'll talk about another feature that I'd really like to see in Blender. But as usual, I'd like to round out the discussion from last video real quick. So to be honest, ZBrush is much less intuitive than Blender and its interface itself is ugly and filled with features. So I actually mostly agree with you. I definitely don't think the entire software is intuitive, but this particular feature was very intuitive and I think it was very well executed. So just putting credit where credit is due. Another thing to keep in mind is ZBrush's system is particularly hard for Blender users to adapt to because it's the complete opposite setup of Blender. Blender offloads most of the work onto Memorize and Hotkeys because it expects most of the users to be using a mouse. ZBrush front loads everything onto a bloated UI because it expects you to be sculpting with a stylus and pad. While there are lots of hotkeys in ZBrush too, they really expected you to be accessing most of the features with the stylus in your hand. When you come at it from that intended angle, it will start to feel a lot more natural. But we'll talk about that more in future ZBrush videos. Okay, here we got, can't agree with you on this one. I prefer my blend is small in size and if you were to add the model through another download package, it would still be a hassle to install. Okay, I completely agree that we should not make Blender any bigger or harder to download. There's a really easy way we can work around this problem. All we gotta do is replace the monkey head with a base body mesh that is the same amount of poly or less. Suzanne is 500 faces big. Any competent low poly modeler can make a base body in 500 faces. So as long as our base body is 500 faces or less, there shouldn't be any relevant difference for anyone's computer. So that's my two cents. A big thanks to everyone last video for leaving a comment. I thought this was a really healthy and productive discussion. Okay, so there's one last feature I wanted to talk about before I close the series up in the next video. And that is the feature that makes Maya one of the most versatile, flexible, and powerful 3D software on the planet, MelScript. Now just to be crystal clear, I'm not saying that this is a popular Maya technique. This is just a technique that my mentor taught me in college and has since saved me thousands of hours of time and I think it would be super useful in Blended too. So let's talk about it. In Maya, we have these things called shelves. The point of a shelf is to hold all your favorite tools in an easy to click spot. So if you love parent constraints and rotation constraints and mirroring joints, you can put all those in your own custom shelf. So that's the first thing I love about Maya. The second is that everything you do in Maya is documented in this little window here. And I mean literally everything. Every time you click on something, every time you deselect something, every time you move any points or rig or animate something, you can see the code for it right here. But once you have the code, you can copy it, go up to anything in your shelf, edit, and replace the code with whatever you recorded down here. From that moment on, anytime you want to replicate that sequence of events, all you gotta do is press that button on that shelf. So MelScript quickly becomes a shortcut to automate anything you want. If you wanted to create three cubes, name this one John, this one Tom, and this one Jill, I can take all that code, take it to any icon on my shelf, paste the code, and turn it into a one button command. And remember, it's not just simple things like this you can automate. You can use this exact same process and automate much more complex things. If I wanna create a shelf with all my most common hand pose libraries, I can copy and paste that code into a single button. If I want all the bones on one rig to automatically move to the same position as the bones on another rig, I can turn that into a button. If I just wanted a button that automatically attaches all the feet and hand and chest I case to my rig, then we can do that too. And if I wanted to automatically generate all 52 shape keys you need for facial motion capture, as long as I have the code for it recorded, I can turn it into a button. Now, I just showed you four wildly different examples. Naming cubes, setting hand animations, rigging IKs, and generating facial mocap shape keys. If you wanted to automate these examples in Blender, you would have to take very different approaches to each problem. And you'd probably need to know a little bit about the Python code for naming objects, for setting bone positions. You might even need to make different add-ons for each of them. But in Maya, the solution for all of these problems is the same copy and paste. Just take the code in the window and drag it into your shelf. Because what Maya realized is the code works whether you understand it or not. So as long as the user can copy and paste, that user can automate their own workflow. This is a one size fit all solution. You can automate any redundant part of your workflow into a button on your shelf and you as an artist can do this without learning any code. And the simplicity of this feature is what I believe makes it so unbelievably powerful. See what Maya has found a way to do is essentially make anyone their own programmer. You random guy watching this video with no programming experience whatsoever could copy and paste your own macro onto a shelf right now if you wanted to. 
Now, the most common argument I've heard against emulating MailScript is, well, it's not that hard to learn to program. And if this logic makes sense to you, you simply have not met enough non-programmers. While it is technically true that nothing is stopping anybody from becoming a programmer, simply put, most people are not willing to put in the time needed to become proficient at coding. And in Blender, those people simply don't have an option to automate their own workflow the way they would have in Maya. Which is unfortunate because I'm sure there's millions of people out there who have great ideas that will never see simply because they'll never overcome that first gate of learning to code. The sooner we find a way to give non-coders the ability to make their own macros, the better things will be for the entire Blender community. Now the good news is, Blender is actually kinda close to a system like this already. If you open the info window and start messing around, you'll see the code for what's happening on the screen similar to how it is in Maya. Now it's not quite as powerful because it doesn't recognize important features like when an object is selected, the order that things are selected, and when you deselect things. So any macro that requires requires proper constraint or parent sequence in the right order is just not possible like it was in Maya. It doesn't seem to register when you edit things in sculpt mode, it doesn't seem to register anything you do in weight paint mode, but once the info window actually captures all these things that it's missing, all we would need is an easy way to store the code into an easy access location. Right now you kinda just have to rerun the code into a Python console or jump through a bunch of hoops and know how to make your own .py file in a text editor, but in my opinion the ideal solution would be something something like you press Q to bring up your quick menu, and if you right click, there would be the option to create a slot where you could dump the code that you've stored into a quick menu option. I think that would be the fastest and most intuitive solution, but definitely let me know if you have any more ideas down below. I really can't overstate just how big of a deal it is for non-coders to be able to create their own macros. People have asked me, why didn't I make these awesome face shape key generators for Blender? And the simple answer is, I just don't know how. I'm not a Python programmer, and ironically, I'm not a Maya programmer either, but I don't have to be in order to make these kind of macros in Maya. I just need to know how to copy and paste, and then occasionally make a few adjustments if I want. So a lot of my workflow which is automated in Maya with MelScript is just never going to be automated in Blender, and I don't have money to pay someone to make an add-on for me, so I really hope that's something that the Blender devs will try and improve over the next few versions of Blender. If you join me next video, I'll be sharing my closing thoughts on the series. I look forward to seeing you all there, but in the meanwhile, as always, I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.